What do you think about the whole Matt Rife thing? He is taking all of your criticism to the bank. He doesn't care. It's me, Mario. What is up, my friends, and welcome back to Uncensored. And guys, today we have an international motherfucking comedian. That's right. right. That's He's right. been on Two Broke Girls, and most importantly, hmm. he has a 4.95 out of five star rating on MailCelebrityFeed.com. Let's so go. give it up for Jonathan Kite, everybody. Let's, go. Let's hey. fucking go. I didn't know that that's where you were going to go with that because um, somebody asked me the other day what my Uber rating was, and yeah. that's what it is. It, it is. Do, do you know about MailCelebrityFeet.com? Not, not before 30 seconds ago. <laughs> you found out 30. Okay, so let me, let me tell you this. Please. I, I, um, whenever a podcast guest, I kind of stalk them. Yeah. So I looked you up online. I, I Googled your name. I looked for nudes and stuff like that. You know? yeah. No joke. One of the first things showed up was um, WikiFeet Men. Which has every single photo that's ever been taken of you. Where have you been showcasing your feet? There's even, I mean, there's even photos <laughs> from like the TV show you were on. Well, that I had. That I, feature yeah. your feet. I had very little clothing sometimes on that show. I saw that, and yeah. And so, and uh, they would balls to the wall. I mean, there was one when I just had a pillow over my stuff. Yes, and I so, saw that one. Yeah, and so that's how I up. found it too, because I clicked on that one and then male celebrity feet showed up. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So you had no idea about the fact that you have a dedicated community that is obsessed with your feet. Is this my camera? Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. I mean, I, I'd heard about this on another podcast where they were talking about just feet in general. Yeah. And that I didn't realize that these communities exist, but I am thankful for them. Well, and listen, Jonathan, not everybody gets featured on MailCelebrityFeed.com. That's a pretty high rating. Wait, is it out of 10? Rating. Is it out of 10? No, no, no. <laughs> that would be terrible. We were butchering no, it. It's is, out of 100. It is, it is out of five, and um, I think you're doing very well. And I don't want to, don't, not to brag, not to brag, but um, if you look at, um, for, for example, if you look at Mario Adrian's, um, I have a 5.5. 5. I was going to say it's an over 5. 5. <laughs> yeah, bro. I used to have a 5.5 5 out of 5 star rating. It went down to a 5 out of 5. But, oh, you know, shit. We're doing well. We're doing well. Yeah. They lowered you. Yeah. Pretty great. Yeah. Because so you, your main thing is like you're a series actor, right? I, that, that's how I've made my living out here. Yeah. And then about 10 years ago, I got into doing stand up. Okay. Um, because I had the time off in between season one and season two of two broke girls. I tried to do stand up when I first moved out here, but it was, it was just too time consuming for yeah. the other, the schedule, the sort of stuff I was doing. And so I said, is it, the moment I got a break and some availability, yeah. I was like, I'm going to do it. I love that. How do you deal with that? Because I feel like stand up is such a, it's such instant gratification. Yes. I love it because it's so efficient. Yeah. You know, I can come up with an idea right now and try it out tonight at the show. For sure. Versus when you're on a show like that. I mean, TV is a little better, but how long would it take from like shooting to actually the episode airing? We did it. Uh, well, it depends because we would do an episode a week. So we would table read on Wednesdays, re okay. rehearse Thursday, Friday, shoot Monday, Tuesday, Got and it. then repeat. Yeah. And so, you know, uh, it, it would be out in a month or so. Like it wouldn't be that, that far behind. Okay. Wow. That's and efficient. I like that. It's, but it's also like network TV though. So it's yeah. like, they have a huge order of 22 episodes. Yeah. So they have, we have to be on schedule. It's not yeah. like the Sopranos, which was famously off for like a decade okay. or whatever. And then they would come back and our stuff is meant to be consumed, especially the show that I was on. It dealt a lot with pop culture. Mm -hmm. And so I remember certain stuff would get cut because by the time we shot God, it, the it time it would air, anymore. it's like, it wasn't relevant anymore. And I remember talking to the creator about it and he was like, this isn't relevant. We'll just cut that scene it won't affect the story. And so I really liked that about it. So yeah. it wasn't necessarily, it, it was instant gratification because we had a live studio audience. Mm -hmm. So we could tell immediately if a joke wasn't working. Oh. So that is amazing because they will tell you just like at a stand up club and you go, give us a second. We're going to rewrite it. Yeah. And they would rewrite the scene in front of the writers would sit there and pitch ideas. And we'd have to memorize new stuff wow. right there. So you're telling me that all the laugh. I thought it was just a laugh track. I didn't know there's actually a live audience. Cause we I'm also, did not I use a laugh track. Wow, so it was real people. Yeah, it was real people, and people would fly in. The show was amazing because people would fly in from all over the world, and so we would. We had a lot of people from Germany because we our guy, um, uh, Roger, this great guy who is sort of in charge of the audience. He's the MC for the night, so he's letting everybody know what go what's going on. So there's yeah. really no dead air, 
And he would often, every time he would say, where are you from? Where's this section from? You know? And then we're like, <laughs> Australia. And he's like, Japan, Germany. And so Germany. <laughs> it was pretty nuts. Oh, wow. Yeah. What's and your so character? What kind of character? I played um, Oleg Goloshevsky, who was a Ukrainian chef who worked in the Williamsburg Diner in Williamsburg. So what's the uh, reason York? for all the photos of you being shirtless on that show? Um, <laughs> I haven't watched making, the show personally. You know, because I Googled it and that's how I found it. There's a lot of shirtless photos of him on the show. I think it was the idea that, um, that there is oh, a, maybe this is my algorithm. <laughs> yeah. I was just going to say, I go, those were not on the show. I don't know. It's just Can we Google. cut? I don't know how we found those photos. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, the, I, I think that the idea was that they, so part of it was that I wore very little clothing to the audition. Mm -hmm. And so, cause I thought about this guy, I've worked in the kitchen before and it's really hot back there. Yeah. And so I think that somebody, if they're given the freedom, they'll wear an undershirt. Yeah. So I wore an undershirt to the audition. Got and it. so, um, and so, and I wore sort of like um, Zumba pants or like, you know, track pants with it. And so the creator was like, let's keep doing that sort of thing. And he was very, sexually oriented or very uh, sexually free. Mm -hmm. And so I think every opportunity for him to wear like a silk robe or come in shirtless for like a sight gag, it, the audience seemed to respond. Yeah. Because I mean, sex sales, of course, that's kind of, obviously yeah, uh, uh, yeah. I made a career at it. And, um, <laughs> and, uh, check the, wiki, <laughs> check the wiki nipples. That one I was aware of. Wiki, wiki nipples. nipples. Dude. I'm telling you, you have, I mean, if acting doesn't pan out the way you think it would, yeah. do you have a backup plan? Dude? As a feet I'm, feet I would love, I, I think I got pretty good nipples. hands and I got pretty good feet. No, you, I mean, you also, I want to acknowledge this real quick. You are one of the best dressed comedians in this oh, town. Well, thank you. Especially male comedians. So you got to say, because how do you feel about that? But it used to be distracting because I always appreciated old school guys that wore suits on stage and then yeah. it would get hot as hell. Like I remember I was in Florida doing a yeah. headlining weekend and I had to change my shirt because yeah. it was so hot. And also with the type of stuff that I wear, because a lot of people are t-shirt and jeans, it looks odd when people are looking, when people immediately, uh, uh, they, I'm not saying they're judging me, but there's something about where I have to, I have to talk about it right away sure. or it looks, or, or it's like, I'm not acknowledging it. Yeah. And so I, I do a little, I always use it cause I would do crowd work with it. Yeah. While they absorbed me, I would do crowd work at it. So that's how I started. And so that's how I used to start my sets. Isn't that crazy? You have to kind of address it. Cause I have to, I'm feeling a little torn with that because so many comedians give me advice, right? They're like, Mario, like your stuff, but you should dress down a little bit, you know, yeah. or this and that. And in the beginning I did. And I try to fit in with other comics, right? And I, I was wearing sweatpants. And I was wearing a baseball cap right. and a like, you know, mega shirt and like you wore fucking. A unitard. You know, one time. What was that? What the, was that? The, the uh, unit. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I wore. A, that's a different story. I wore a Borat suit. Borat. A golden, I was gonna say, yeah, yeah. A golden Borat suit yeah, on stage. Sure. This is not my everyday stand-up attire, right? But I would feel the judgment, especially from straight dudes in the audience, for sure. And I would feel the need to dress down, but then I felt like I wasn't being authentic. I so think like that's what people battle. buy into. People buy into authenticity. And yeah. if you're not doing it as a gag, right? Like if you're doing something that's so ridiculous every time that it takes away from your comedy. Sure. That's why I was always comment on it. I had this really thick wool suit that I like to wear that's white and black houndstooth, really large. <laughs> yeah. And I got on stage and I was going to somewhere afterwards and I was like, let's just get out of the way. I look like Beetlejuice's gay brother, Beetle Bruce. Yeah. I was like, if you say it three times, I'll meet you in stall three. Yeah. You know, and the moment I said that people were laughed or whatever, they were like, well, who cares? Then it moved on. I didn't have to do yeah, anything yeah, yeah. because I go, I get what I'm wearing. Mm. I'm okay with it. You should be too. That's yeah. And then you just move on. Yeah. Cause I always feel the need to address that. Cause I have a whole thing where I address the fact that I look like a douchebag. Sure. You know? And I think that that always helps off the top. I, too. Agree. I think, right. Yeah. The thing is what I realized, what kind of helps with me is the fact that I'm foreign. There's always a little bit of, Oh, we'll give you, we will give foreigners yeah. such a break in this country. It's, Cause we go, yeah. even if we don't think it's funny, America's like, he's trying. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice. Well, not even in terms of that. It's more so in terms of uh, the way I dress. Right. Oh. Like for example, if you, I was I've a, never seen you wear something like crazy. No, no, also like no, it's it's not crazy, but like, you know, I, I, even if I don't dress up, I look a certain way. I look a little douchey, you know what I mean? And I have I've felt the need to address it. Mm. And if but on top of that, if I was another no offense, Chef, basic white guy from Tennessee, 
as another straight white comedian who's just a douche. Like, you know, then I feel like that it's was it's very little, specific for you not to take offense. <laughs> I'm like, no, so, uh, no, no offense, offense taken. If you were sitting to my left. <laughs> <laughs> no, but there's definitely, I mean, if Jeff did comedy, right? There is, I, you know, I think that's changing a little bit because yeah. I think you look at Matt Reif. Sure. Right? There, I think that we are changing what we perceive as someone who is able to be funny. Because mm. back in the old, I remember when I first moved here, it's like, well, you're, that guy's too handsome. Um, he can't do comedy. But yeah. the, that's obviously been, you know, people have proved that wrong time and time again. And you think about all the variety sure. that's out there now and the options and sort of breaking stereotypes of that too. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think when one person does it, is it harder? Of course. But if one person proves they can do it, yeah. then it means it can be done. Yeah. It may not be the norm, no, but it could be that. just the beginning. And yeah. there's other guys that are like Anthony Jeselnik. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are good looking yeah. guys. Yeah, yeah. And, and so I think that the more and more I think we tend to see in this community that, to inspire other people because mm -hmm. someone goes, maybe if and you know, that's one of the things about visibility, right? You see somebody and you go, if that guy or girl could do it, maybe I can do it. Sure. And so I think we're going to, I think with yes. Matt and, you know, guys like you and stuff who, who start to get more successful and whatever, yeah. I, mean, I bet, I bet there's, there's every frat has a guy who looks like Matt Reif, who is now going to try comedy. True. That's a good point. So man, I'm, I think I'm that, and that is empowering for me because I'm inspiring my community of underrepresented, ridiculously good looking model dudes. Yeah, you guys should go on a Who tour. Didn't think group. they could do <laughs> the runway tour. <laughs> the runway tour, dude. Yeah. But yes. you dressing well is such a big part of you. That's what my girl said. The first thing she knew, like she said, she's like, look how well he dresses, well, Jeff. But not you, you should, should do that, I mean, also, Jeff. I've, I will like, say my fiance you, has a huge. She's like, look at the shit that you're wearing. <laughs> <laughs> no offense is what she said. <laughs> no offense, Jeff. If you look like a basic white guy from Tennessee, no offense. <laughs> it's like, none taken, Oh, babe. my God. Yeah, no, he, he's wearing a, it's almost a crop top today. It's I saw that. Yeah. I noticed. No, but I want to commend you because I think you look fantastic. Also, my oh, um, I'm also influenced right now by because I used to work in the fashion industry as yeah, a model. Yeah, of course. Never was huge into fashion, though. My fiance, though, is a fashion stylist. I mean, that's how we got connected yeah. ultimately. So she's inspiring me too, you know. I always yeah. think I always liked old Hollywood. So, and my grandfather used yeah. to dress in. In, uh, in suit and tie. So I just liked the way that looked. And mm -hmm. it's like, I already looked like, I mean, I was telling you in the elevator, this hairstyle, I looks, I don't, I can't tell what side of the civil war I'm on, but I'm fighting <laughs> for something. And you know, but like, aside from this, I already look like a sloppy uh, cartoon character. So it's like in the face. So I feel like there's something like there's a brand called Etro. Yes. Um, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so when I was in college, um, I sent away for one of their catalogs just to see like sort of what their look book looked like before. And I lied to them and they sent me one from Italy and all of the men are, have like these sort of ridiculous hairstyles and big facial hair, yeah. but they look like aristocrats. Yes. And so that was what yeah. I always liked. That's why yes. I love old paintings and history. I agree. Yeah. So yeah. that's sort of like, if, if that's my perfect um, image that if I could go forward and do whatever I want on stage, it would be like that type of stuff. I hundred percent agree. And there's something in psychology, I think it's called cognitive dissonance where it is very attractive to break the expectation. Yeah. Right. So if you, for example, you're like a biker dude with like, or if you're a guy with face tats and like messy hair, even dreads, but then having a, a tuxedo or like a very tight suit, it's interesting. No, you do. Just you like you a, see it with a lot of tattoo models now. Yeah, that have like, like a the, clean the, fade. Like there's exactly. such a, there's such a sharpness to them. Exactly, because it's like it's an interesting contrast. Yeah. So I like what he's saying. You know, with the what he said with the cartoon thing, and then you know, like the, the yeah, dress I mean, is I, good, right? I, I mean, I do. I look because the thing is, you always know how the world sees you by because I have an opinion of myself and I like the way I look and what I do. But when I go out for castings, right? Yeah, I'm always like the, the guy is like a a, a tired ball of lint. You know what I mean? Like the, the, yeah. the description is always like, you know, like a cockroach who's like, you know, who's, uh, who, you know, who, who's, uh, who's so that's, your yeah. that's your archetype. That's your. It's like, it's like the, they're the craziest things and you go, yeah. all right, I guess I'm that to people. So for me, I, I, you know, I, I like sweatpants. I don't wear them. Um, I, I like the sort of a button up thing and I feel very comfortable in it. Yeah. And so for me, when I get on stage, Great. what I'm about to say might make people very uncomfortable. So I want to be as comfortable as possible. Great. I love that.
Yeah. You know, and I've, and I've tried, sometimes I wear sneakers and something, but I, I'll look back at a, at a video, you know, when we're editing stuff up and I'll, and I was like, I like that a guy who looks like that is it like, you could tell that guy's comfortable when mm-hmm. I see myself in like a yeah. suit or something like that. Great. And cause it's authentic back to authenticity, right? If it's authentic to you, right? That's right. And I also think it gives you a little bit of a, a recognizability. I think like so. when I think of you truly, when I think of John and kind, I've seen you a few times. I love your stuff, but I always think of like, Oh, it's the guy with the cool trench coat. Oh, thanks. You know what I mean? It's like, cause it's not that many people dressing this. So it's like, you have some sort of, you know, but also it's authentic. It's you're the not way just I've another basic dressed. white guy. Well, you're the, the white thing. guy from, from Tennessee. Fucking- I'm not from Tennessee. <laughs> Jeff, feel free to chime in anytime, but um, no, no, but that's the, the idea that I do, f- whether people like it or don't like it. Like I did a set one time at the laugh factory and I looked like a fool. I, I had something ridiculous on. I probably liked it at the time, but thinking back on it, I'm like, it looked a little weird. What were, what were you wearing? I was wearing a, a, a wide brim hat. I was wearing a long, this is probably like 10 years ago, long green corduroy trench coat. Mm. And then I was wearing like, you know, those tunic shirts, like those really long from the early 2000s. Those yeah. long. And I was wearing these military <laughs> pants and oh I remember lace up boots. And I remember um, Dom, Dom Herrera <laughs> got on stage after me and just roasted me. To, for the audience. And yeah. it was fine. Like I didn't, I enjoyed his comedy. I, I could definitely see the truth in it. And I didn't care Yeah, because the thing is at the end of the day, if I'm that way and I'm not trying to be a kid, cause I'm not trying to be a character on stage. And I think that what helps me be as authentic as I can be is not trying to like dress down or be like a Clark Kent version of myself yeah. to, but yeah. you know, unless that's what I want or that's what I'm feeling like. Yeah. So there's plenty of times that I'll, I'll be relaxed and, and wear something different. But a lot of times if I'm going somewhere after I'm like, I'll just wear the same thing yeah. and then I'll go to dinner. No, I love it. Do you have a stylist or is this just, you no, just- I don't, uh, I sort of, honestly, I'll, I'll see something and I'll, I don't, you know, maybe in a movie or something like things I, I try to get inspired by people or, or, um, or, or images that I see in film and television or even in magazines. And I think, um, sort of like what I like about it and maybe I have to alter something and it, and I think putting care and people can tell, like, it's not just hi, <laughs> but the, the thing is like, you have a great frame for it. And I do, I also appreciate that, um, when something like fits well, cause I have a buddy of mine who's um, who, who has, who dresses well, but he's short. Yeah. And so it's it, traditionally, it's been harder for him to find clothes sure. in that nature that look well in him. So, you know, I just think, and if something, you know, works, like I said, I'll look back on something and I'll be like, what a ridiculous thing I was wearing. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. I, at the time I'm like, this was cool. And yeah. not to regret or judge. Yeah. Cause think about your comedy, right? I think about the jokes that I first used to tell. And I was like, I, I don't know that I'm embarrassed by it, but I wouldn't tell that joke today. Sure. hundred percent. Yeah. And so yeah. I, yeah. And I think yeah. fashion is just easier because we photo so much of it. Yeah. And also what I love doing though, is what you said earlier, you're breaking the expectation. Yeah. Like I love, that's my favorite thing in the world is when you are in a box because of the way you look. Right. And then you break that shit. I fucking love it. Yeah. Cause people automatically used to have assumptions about me and us and stuff. And then like Jeff, for example, I mean, I make fun of him a lot, but Jeff is one of the sweetest guys. <laughs> no, he's a fucking sweetheart, you know, like he's very caring, things like that you wouldn't see. And I, I love so many times I've met people when I first met Jeff too, right. I saw him on Instagram. I was like, fuck another basic white guy from Tennessee. You know, we met up you were right. and in real, in real life, I met what a surprisingly genuine dude. And that happens all the time. And I love when that happens. And I love doing that, like dressing up and then being super vulnerable on stage and doing something that they wouldn't expect. Of That's me. the thing. If you get to meet somebody, you, you do give them the benefit of the doubt. Whereas like mm-hmm. when you take a snapshot, you take a snap judgment. Yeah. And so I think the cool thing about comedy is that you, we allow people into our minds mm-hmm. to change the way that they may judge or perceive. And mm-hmm. if I can do that, even by just being myself, and yeah. you know, looking whatever it, and now sometimes I admit, like I did a show at the lab like a week ago, mm-hmm. I was wearing something crazy. I had to take part of it off. Like okay. I didn't want to come on. What were you wearing that time? Jonathan? I was wearing, <laughs> I was wearing this, um, this giant plaid coat that I have that, um, that has like a, uh, uh, it's, it's almost it's knee length and it has like a bright blue silk liner. Wow. And it, I love wow. the coat, but it's, it is like, if I don't bring it up, People are thinking like, 
Like yeah. it, it looks like if yeah. a, it, it looks like a, a, if a if a kilt was a snuggie. Yeah, it's like it's a full it's a full on bodysuit kilt sort of thing. But I was going somewhere after, and so I go, you know what? Just put it off to the side. Like there's no yeah. reason. Um, to, I mean, listen, if, if I had a joke about it or, or if I actually had material that I needed to work on yeah. that I had just written and I didn't want to give myself, like if I was able to come up with something about that, it would be a false place to start from mm. to know if the material was going to work. Yeah. So I really was like, I want people to judge me. I remember I changed shirts. I'm like, I'm what, wear a t-shirt, just wear jeans. I need to know if this material is working. Interesting. Yeah. Cause so much of it, yeah, of course the first perception, you yeah. walk, when you walk up on stage, people already have opinions about you. And then, and you I know. used to do that. That's how I yeah. started by, by sure, Adria, with, yeah. with what I look like and how I sound that came from, I just got to get it this out of the way. And then it became part of my act, but mm. it was literally just, it was just crowd work. Yeah. Cause I'm like, you know, I know I get it. Like it, uh, you know, whatever, I, whatever I would say and, and sort of fiddle with it. And then I go, great. So now you're aware that I look like this and I'm aware I look like this. Yeah. Let's move on. But yeah. if I'm, but if I'm going to do, I can't do that every time. And sure. if I really want to make that a bit, yeah. then I need to hone it and craft it and place it a little further back Yeah. instead of like, let's get this out of the way. Cause I think that that is not that it's, it's cheating, but it's like, it's like a, then it forces me to that I have yeah. to open with that. And it's yeah. like, I don't want that. Buy new outfits, fucking spend money. Yeah. That's the first yeah. thing I notice on your videos and your reels. When you show up on like Instagram, I'm like, man, he looks, he looks good. That's the first thing. I think a lot it's of people another thing. I think Jeff it. is just sexually attracted to me. Yeah. So that's also an aspect of the whole thing. If you come out in gym shorts, I don't know. Maybe you could pull it if you're really funny that night. True. You true. You gotta look good. That's part Dude, of it. Dude, I mean, one of my first sets I've done, the first set ever at the Laugh Factory I did was actually in, in a Speedo. Because I'd done this thing on American Idol where I was catwalking in right. a speedo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I had material about a speedo and I was like, I'm doing the show, so I might as well just fucking pull the speedo off. But you know what happened, dude? <laughs> so basically, I was pretty new into stand up then, you know, and I had a good set. It, I got good laughs and stuff. But then I had this bit where I basically want to, I want to encourage straight men to wear speedos. So I was like, I want to make speedos great again. And in that moment, I was wearing sweatpants and I ripped the sweatpants off and I, I was wearing a speedo and I stuffed it with a white sock. And then I'm standing there. I want to make speedos great again. People were like cheering. They were like, yes. And then I had another seven minutes of material after that. <laughs> <laughs> that should be your closer. <laughs> I know. Nobody yeah. told me that when I first started. <laughs> yeah, there's um, Dane, Kick, uh, Dane Cook has a really funny bit about where he tears his clothes off at the end about different ethnicities, how they fight in a street fight. It was like a okay. big closer for a long time. Yeah. But it's like, yeah, once you reveal all. Yeah. It's like, what else? Uh, what else? Cause uh, then I was just, <laughs> yeah. Cause then you're just Literally, like, then I was yeah. like, so yeah, being from Germany is tough because you know, America is like, people have so many emotions. So I went into material and the issue was also that from that point on, I, I, I was a little self-conscious about, you know, about my package. Yeah. Of so then I'm like in my mind, trying to fluff, think about nice thoughts at the same time, trying to deliver the jokes. People were also distracted by my leg. So it was, it was, but, and it also was, I think there was an expectation <laughs> having not been there wishing I had like seeing that you think, Oh, if that's where he's starting, where is he going to yeah, go? Exactly. Is he going to rip it <laughs> off? And there's another, like, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Just because I think people are so accustomed to comedy and the heightened, yeah, you know, yeah. the sort of the process or at least some sort of expectation. Maybe it's yeah. no, in threes or whatever it is. Sure. So I think it was just one. Yeah, it, it was, was just, just said, one. Yeah, yeah. It I was three them. inches. That's what you should have said. This doesn't happen yeah. in three. But yeah. <laughs> that's the thing, right? It's like, but you, you got to be because I, I remember I would like start with the best impressions I could do because okay. I really was trying to get it. That's how I started as sure. an impressionist. And, sure, yeah. And, um, and then I was like, Oh my God, now I have to do material. And I remember like they couldn't, I couldn't follow the impressions. Cause it's like, Cause yeah, then people were like, Oh, we want to hear more of that. Yeah. And I was like, Oh, what's up with this thing? And then people are like, who cares? <laughs> you know, like that was <laughs> the attitude. Yeah. That's a hundred percent. And then if, so it's like, I realized that for, so for a long time, then I would do like, you know, what a set in town, 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, I would just do it. And then at the very end, because they might have seen me before, or at least maybe saw my videos online. I'd be like, all right, I'll do some impressions. Yeah. And then so that I could sort of be like, I fulfill that, mm -hmm. but it doesn't have to be the driving thing in my standup. Yeah. And it also helped even for me, because selfishly, like we're up there trying to get better, right? Sure, Obviously yeah. we're giving a performance to the audience, but it, we at some point need to 
put ourselves in a situation where if we don't succeed, we will fail. That's sort of what I believe. So it's like, if I'm constantly leaning on, Oh, this bit isn't working. Who wants to see an impression? I'm giving myself an out. No, hundred percent. That's what, like sometimes when I was, especially when I'm flowing with stand up, I force myself to do things that I'm not even that good. Like I force myself to like, for example, only do like mainly do crowd work or something. Cause I know things that work and I, I know that I can do well, but then you kind of, Got to get to that next level yeah. of, you know, just. And that's tougher, the crowd work compared to. No, it's just, I mean, it's less predictable, I would say. So there's definitely higher stakes in it if you rely on it. But then I did some shows in Austin that were like only crowd work shows. Yeah. And I love those. Well, I and that- I had such, so much fun that, and that kind of made me have that breakthrough of like, no, I took the risk and I love it. And then now I do it all the time. So, but if you. They help. I mean, here's yeah. the thing. I think crowd work is something that people have come to expect because it's what comedians are posting. Most sure. people that have ever seen comedy today, they've never been to a live show. They yeah. consume it on social media. And because we don't want to give away our actual jokes on social media, we post crowd work clips. So it's like, hey, if you like the crowd work, you'll come to the show. The thing is, though, I think it's setting a weird precedent. Mm, I'm not sure. saying that it's a bad precedent. It's yeah. just it's that when you you hear people, even when they do their specials now, you hear crowd work on the special get an unbelievable pop because you're getting credit for the improv in the moment mm. where people acknowledge they're funny. They've you're funny. They've obviously paid a ticket to see you. But if you can be funny and do a magic trick at the same time, that's what's impressive. So what because I what I did, what I'll do every now and then is if I have a, a bunch of time at the end, if I'm like, I'm not really working on anything, I'll go yell out an impression, anybody, and I'll do it. And that is my, what I try to do to like up the crowd work, because Mm. when you do crowd work, and by the way, there's so many people who are making an unbelievable living at it. And that's amazing. And I think for me, what I've realized having nothing to do with them, but looking at myself and going, I think that if I do crowd work too much, it hurts my writing Mm, because it allows me to just get away with, yeah, what's up with the house, your shirt. If that's kind of short, you know, like you, you pointed out, and then so people are sort of invested in what's happening in that moment. But I, but if I, what if I go to another show, I got to find another guy's whose shirt that's like that. Mm. Or like, what's <laughs> up with these, these, you know, you got to, and by the way, it doesn't always work. People are posting phenomenal crowd work, but we all know sure. crowd work does not always work. No. Or it's like, you're the seventh guy to talk about how crop this guy's shirt is mm-hmm. on a lineup, you know? So you got to be careful about doing crowd work all the time in a, a showcase show like Laugh Factory Comedy Store or improv because if you're the fourth guy to go or fourth performer to go, everyone's already talked about the talked woman about in the, the green obvious shirts. Thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, remember I did, I did a Super Bowl. I did the, the Super Bowl Sunday at um at uh, improv. Such a fun, I mean, really fun in the main room that night. And uh, and this this guy, I got there kind of late. And this guy was in the front row. I was closing. I guess he had like a golden fleece he was wearing, like Jason the Argonauts or some shit. I don't know. And I go, hey, somebody already talked about your sh- uh, your shirt. And I, but I didn't know, but I'm like, I'm sure they have, but I wasn't sure to what extent. And it was almost annoyed because so many people have talked about it. And so I (laughs) I said something like about just like, okay, go fuck yourself. And then I just like moved on. (laughs) And, um, and apparently I found it after like every comedian had come in to just do their set and they talked about that fucking shirt. So it's like. If you, if it's you're doing an hour or your show half hour on the road, yes, I think crowd work is, is probably um, not acceptable because everything is acceptable. But I think there's a little bit of bad form, at least when I think of myself, because I think that it hurts my writing, and I think that I don't, I don't, I don't want to have to rely on it and have it be a crutch. And if I do it, because mm. I'll tell you, when I do the impressions thing, where I'm like yell out an impression, sometimes it goes good and sometimes it goes bad. But I think that there is something. That is, at least I am thrilled by it. Yeah. Instead of like relying on hard work. Like, you know, we look at somebody and we're like, this guy with the tattoo, the guy said that (laughs) joke a hundred times. He's pretending that he made it up for you. What's wrong with the tattoo, dude? um, (laughs) See my special. (laughs) um, But that's it. What about heckler work? Have you had any memorable heckler moments? I um, Yeah, I mean, do do you get heckled? Sure. I mean, mainly in, dude, it's funny. Depends where. It's usually women, drunk women. Uh, that's like the number one demo for heckling. Yes. Right. Or I had one story and I tell us, I made a video about it too on YouTube. Um, it was a, a guy in Miami who was at a show with Bill Dawes. You know Bill? Yeah. Very yeah. Well. So we did a show. And we both had a joke, about a, gay, a joke about a gay gym and this dude didn't like it. And he was like, none of that gay shit, bro. Tell you gay, sh- tell you gay joke right there, bro. 
And he was like um, heckling us the, the whole time about the gay stuff. And then I started like peck bouncing for him. He was making fun of my tank top and they wouldn't stop. And they were super like essentially homophobic, yeah, even though sure. we're basically like sort of straight guys. We just talk about gay gyms, right? And then um, they got so offended. It went on, went on. Bill actually stopped his set. I was hosting. He just went off, left. Because they heckled him the whole time. The improv did not throw him out in Miami. And then at, at the end of the show, um, wow. at some point they were kicked out. And then they, uh, by the way, this was my first show on the road ever. <laughs> this is a good start, man. but it's fun. And then at the end, they, uh, they were kicked out. And then when we left the club and went outside, they'd called the cops on us. So then no joke, there was like five cops and they were saying they were being racist towards them. It was an Asian woman and a black guy Oof. that were heckling. And it was like, yeah, maybe you're more of a target for hecklers because I don't even know. I don't know. It's like, uh, or it's women that are drunk and kind of like, I mean, I don't want to sound like, but like, you know, flirty, flirty. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I think I, I've had it. You get hecklers all the time. I mean, I had a, I had a woman who I did, um, Arizona, one of my favorite clubs, Tempe, the improv in mm. uh, over 4th yeah. of July weekend. And, mm. uh, mm. I ask about Elon. Now the thing is I sometimes invite it, th which is my fault. But I'm curious about an area when I'm working on a new bit, I have crowd work built into, not crowd work, sorry, a question built into my set because I think that sometimes interesting conversations come out of it and I'm able to think about what the perception, sure. maybe not necessarily, but where the country is in any given moment. And I asked about Elon Musk and this, and I asked like, oh, do you guys like Elon or hate Elon? And this woman just yelled out, he's raping the planet. And then I was like, <laughs> oh, wow, okay. And then- <laughs> I was like, and I sort of did a, a joke about it and like kept moving on. And then her phone rang and I was like, and so I felt compelled because I'm like to go back to her. And so it, it's tough because I think I don't just get straight out, like go fuck you or like, you know, Trump or whatever people would yell. But I do think that once I've given somebody permission to talk, because when her phone rang, she started talking yeah. to me about yeah. it. And it's like, and by the way, it was 20 minutes later in the set. So it's it's a tough thing. I think when I was younger, I would get heckled just because people thought they could, but it's hard to, for me to determine if they would still heckle if I wasn't asking questions. Mm. Okay. Some guy in Virginia yeah. asked me to tell a joke one time. He was like, tell a joke. And I remember the room was completely <laughs> sold out and I was just like, oh boy, this is no not boy. going well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I said the Trump. Tell yeah, a joke. Not, he's not going well, this guy. Yeah. Tell a joke, okay? Tell a joke. <laughs> Excuse me. Tell, tell a joke. joke. Excuse yeah. me. Hey, how does it work? So if I was an audience member and I, I yelled out an, an impression, so do you know every single, because first of all, I got to tell you, as a German, I know nobody in America. Like I know not a single person. You know, I know David Hasselhoff. Yeah. You know, he's my idol. Arnold Schwarzenegger, but people just yell out random impressions. Like yeah, they, I mean, you know, it, it varies to be totally honest with you. There's uh, there was one time that I did it at Laugh Factory and like they, they were like Kevin Hart, uh, Denzel. And I remember thinking like, are they just, and it was, it wasn't necessarily a predominantly anything like color, gender, We're whatever. To get a but everyone was just like, right. That's what yeah. I was saying. Like, I was like, oh my God, it's, you know, is, uh, and so they were, they kept, throwing out only black celebrities. Yeah. And so the thing is, I, it's not that I don't do black celebrities, but uh, I do a few of them, but there's one of those things where it's not very practical for me to do. Cause sometimes I do it for voiceover mm. and they'll never hire a white guy to do Denzel for <laughs> yeah. a thing. So for me yeah. to work on a Denzel, I just don't, it doesn't feel as a good use of my time. Sure. So sometimes it goes terrible. And then, or sometimes they'll, try to do something that's a crazy suggestion. And if I'm able to pull it out then, or I'm able to make a joke out of them about it. Yeah. And so the, it, you know, it's, it, it, it keeps you on your toes. But what man. do you do if, if I yell out like Denzel Washington? Um, I'm trying to be, I'm trying to think of what I did. I didn't, uh, I probably made a joke about getting canceled. So would you exactly? I think that's the. I think so what, that's what, what I, if I did. yelled out like a, an Indian name or so. Because like, how do you feel about? Would you do an Indian accent right so, now live on live television? So I, they asked me when I did when I did China when I did stand up in China. Okay, they were like, "Do you do uh, any Chinese actors?" And I was like, "Well, it, it'll just sound racist." Yeah. I was like, "You just want me to get up there and do Jackie Chan?" I go, "I don't think you're prepared for the racist." <laughs> impression you're about to get <laughs> and i love by the way jackie chan is one of my favorite 
one of my idols, actually. I think he's one of the greatest that ever did it. Global, international superstar. I have a great respect for him. But I'm like, if I was to do the voice, it would just come off as like a, you know, as, as just right. pure racism. Yeah. Even if it was like, you do sound like Jackie Chan and you do sound like a racist stand up at a Ku Klux Klan meeting. It's like yeah. slower English or like a little bit. But like also the, mis- but the way that they, that a lot of Chinese people don't say L's or R's and, you sure, know, sure, sure, just yeah. because that yeah. idea of just, you know, like um, um, Americans or, or, uh, or white people famously doing like Mickey Rooney did it in Breakfast at Tiffany's where he had like the buck teeth and the, his eyes were like this. And it's like yeah. we people have made a living doing that. Sure. And and so, you know, it's just in bad taste because that's, that's the only thing is I'm trying to have fun with it. And I don't want people to necessarily feel bad or for me mm. to go to have to go to a racist place to like appease yeah. the mob. So where do you draw the line though with that? Like, okay, you would do, uh, you know, Chinese, obviously that's one thing. Yeah. I think people like a German accent, always a thing, right? People do that all the time, you know? Any white accent. Any I'm white accent with. is yeah. fine. Yeah, I think I'm Italian, fine. Russian, yeah. Italian, anything Italian, like Russian, that. Yeah. French, German, yeah. um, anywhere where there are, where white people tried to colonize. What about um, Japan? Because Japan is kind of like in the middle, you know, because Japanese people are like, they're, they're very, they're doing well. They fucking were on the bad side of the second world war, you know? So I feel like, do they deserve to be impressionized? I won't do an impression <laughs> of them, but you know, a buddy of mine, we were doing the show in, in for a Japanese culture center downtown. And, um, this, uh, my buddy went on first who it was his night Japanese. And he, he, he was so bad. I mean, he knew it. He, he was so, he couldn't get a laugh. Yeah. And then I went on stage and I was like, you know, give it up for Derek, uh, who did his best impression of Oppenheimer bombing in front of a bunch of Japanese people. And, um, <laughs> and they left. Yeah. Cause I think if there's like intent to, sure. I, I'm not trying to be racist. It's also, not trying to be, it's never the people who it's usually not the people who I are the, the people who are it's, in it's defense white, it's of white women getting offended on behalf of yeah, people uh, who are not there. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah I, I would agree. And so we, we had fun with that. And I don't think, you know, we had a little back and forth with my, myself and the audience and the show was awesome. But I do think that because there are so it, it's such low hanging fruit to mock an accent. There's a, there's sure. a yeah. difference of doing um, an impression, which I'm not like for, for the most part, except for like a few politicians and whatnot. I don't, I'm not mocking the people that I'm doing. I'm not trying to make a career off of being like Seth Rogen is such an, you know, I respect these people. So I'm trying to just have fun, you know, do something yeah. sort of lighthearted with it. Um, but with, uh, with an accent with the people, I, there's no part of me that's trying to offend a group of people. Sure. So I think that even if there was a spot on impression uh, of, um, of Jackie Chan, I think that no matter how good it was, I think that the, I, the need to not want to offend a group of people, mm-hmm. you know, supersedes my ability to be an impressionist. Yeah. Yeah. Well, also I think with Japanese, I, mean, I think also Chinese people in terms of racism, I've been to China multiple yeah. times. Yeah. I, I think I can confidently say I've never seen more racism oh. than in China. Like yeah. I've never seen more racism. Than, nobody's more racist than Chinese people. I think there is so, well, unbelievable. The, the things I've heard Chinese people say like blatantly racist towards other people from China. Oh yeah. Like brown people from we parts think of Southern that we China. Own racism in this country. No, this has and been done like, before. <laughs> well, yeah. Other parts of the world. Wild. Either, it's wild. wild. And, they're, and yeah. they're totobly open with it. hundred percent. There's not even, awareness around it like you know in america you kind of say you know people you make fun like, before you say that exactly no. say the n-word before you they know, look no, right they, at you like exactly and then you'd be like what do you say they repeat it i mean they, there's <laughs> zero times. fucks given yeah zero and so yeah. you know i mean I, I i bet i told some they you know uh, fair enough but when i did the, the 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 shows in china they wouldn't laugh at i bet they would have laughed at impressions yeah. of themselves. I do think that it, I, I had very warm, receptive crowds that were wonderful. The one thing that they didn't laugh at, which I, I get it, was communism. I tried to do a joke about communism. To the Japanese crown? No, to Chinese. Chinese, yeah, I was going to yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, yeah. in China, you did brother, in, the, in a theater in Shanghai. Oh. And when I tell you it sounded like somebody had taken away my hearing. The, the place <laughs> went deathly silent. I'm talking about a, it was packed 
and then the people were having fun. We're rolling, and I go, you know, because the the amount of smog that's in China, yeah. in Shanghai, is it, it's unreal. When you see it, you're sort of. I said, you don't need to have a. I said I wanted to have a fog machine or some stupid joke about like I to come out like a like a magician, you know, with a fog machine. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I didn't realize though, uh, and I made a, a nationalist joke about cigarette smoke there, and about nothing, nothing about Xi Jinping, nothing like you know, but just about communist and like we're gonna have everybody smoke silence yeah 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 because also yeah. they're afraid they're probably afraid to laugh because in china you know there's it's a full surveillance state where like they may be afraid that if they laugh that they're gonna their fucking rating score is gonna go down and they're yeah. gonna oh, yeah, yeah. No, you know, for sure stuff like that yeah yeah the social credit score the social Isn't, score is yeah. that a, is that really thing they implemented because i've read about it yeah. when i was in germany it's a thing now i mean i had i had seen a bunch of articles on it i can't imagine it was taken away because yeah. they seem pretty, uh, they seem pretty up to date with their stuff. I mean, the fact that they have a different TikTok than we do, yeah. you we, know, we I mean, they're, they're, they're being whatever, yeah. pretty close. Yeah, all that. Is stuff. there uh, any like wiggle room for accent impressions? For example, like I think it would be in bad taste for you to go up there, squint your eyes, and say like "ching chong chang." That sounds not funny. But when I watch <laughs> South Park, so cartoons can get funny. up with anything cartoons, because they're okay. not. But I'll tell you one thing: I was just in um, Arlington at the. Uh, no, it was Magoobies in Baltimore. Great club. And um, this guy said that he was, I do a bit about 23 and me. And I'm like, did any, did you figure out anything about yourself? And this, like, you know, I asked the audience and we have some fun with it. And this guy goes, yeah, it turns out I'm, I'm part Asian. I'm part Korean. And I, he looked like you. I'm like, there's no way. <laughs> I was like, you're wrong. And he goes, no, 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 no. And then I, I did an impression of him telling the world that he was Korean. And he goes, no, no, I, I bow, I do this, so very much, you know. And I'm like, is that, is that, is that you? And I went off on this guy for a while. <laughs> I got to post the clip because I think it was pretty good. And it was like, I'm like, dude, you're not. There's no part of you because he was like, I'm 50 percent Korean. I'm like, dude, <laughs> no, no, you're not. No, you're not. <laughs> you're, I was like, I said something like, you're, you're, you're saying that so you can do some racist shit right now. Yeah. Like, you're not Korean, buddy. Trust me. <laughs> and um, and I will do that, but I was clearly doing him. Like his sure, idea. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, cartoons can get away with anything because it's like, it's not a, it's not real. And they're sort of, uh, you, they're like, they're the great equalizer because they're sort of just, um, a mirror. I think like the good ones, like South park family guy, those, yeah. you know, Simpsons that they're, they're just a mirror to our thoughts. Like I've never watched South park and be like, people don't think that it's like, yes, they do. But, but it takes, a, a two dimensional person mm -hmm. to be able to say it. To be able to say, yeah. yeah. Has it, it gone like a little too far in comedy? Like the pendulum swung too far to where you can't give each other shit. You can't give different ethnicities shit. I or? think you gotta, I think comedy's always changing, which I think, you know, and it's changing even faster with social media. I think it just makes you up your game. People are like, is it okay to be funny? I'm like, we're, we, you just have to invent. That's what comedy is. Comedy is looking at what's happening now and what the trends are moving forward. So it's, it's, it's as in the moment, almost as you can be with, with commentary in, in an art with artistic integrity. I think, you know, I think a lot of like dramas tend to look back and comedy tends to look at the present and forward. And because everything is changing around you, you as a comedian, we are responsible to sort of move forward with it. When you look like somebody who it didn't change their style, like even greats who have been around forever, Bill Burr, his stuff is essentially the same, but he's always evolving as a comedian mm. or like Chappelle. They're always evolving. And so, and they say some pretty hard, you know, I love them, you know, but they say some pretty severe things. Sure. But I think you also can, once you're on that level, you have a little bit more, cause you have your own fan base and that's kind of like you. Yeah. yeah but I think Bill you used to more, say some pretty crazy shit. Yeah. I mean, I think you, you just, you, you had, I always think like, you know, the intention, right? Judge the intention, maybe not the joke because it's not perfection. We're working stuff out all the time. You yeah. know, I did some jokes the other night that were not there. And yeah. they'd worked three nights earlier at another club. Sure, yeah. And it was like, well, okay, it's not there yet. Okay. But I don't think, you know, I've had, I've, I built in a section of my act where I, I do a joke about telling jokes where I'm like, these are just jokes. And I have to like explain that to the audience because I think that there's now, there's fun to be had in that because there's now there's like a new thing where, like you said, people go, we have gone too far, mm. but these are just jokes. So like, Oh, now that that's part of the conversation, can we make fun of that? Yeah. And can we have fun with that? Cause I yeah. think anybody, anybody who's in there to have a bad time, 
anybody can take anything out of context at any yeah, point sure. in history, you know? Um, but it's, it, it's our job to not service or give energy to those people, but keep doing the thing that we want to do. Yeah. And then more specific is we're talking about like current topics and events. What do you think about the whole Matt Rife thing? Like specifically with that, do you so, think that has gone too far? Cause that's, you know, I listened to the Jordan Peterson. I think it was on Jordan Peterson was, a couple of days yeah. ago. And they talked about like, you know, how it's gone too far and people are just trying to cancel him. What's your take on I that? I think you, you, this is hard, but I think that anybody, they don't realize how much free press they're giving Matt Rife. Mm. Like yeah. I've known Matt since he was a sea monkey, you know, like, sea monkey. Yeah. A little dude. Since oh, yeah. he was 17 years old in the yeah, clubs. Yeah. What a sweetheart of a guy. I don't know if you've ever met him, but he is a incredibly kind uh, and sweet guy. And the truth is the bigger you get, the more people aren't going to agree with you. Sure. So it's like you see these edgy comics, like whoever they are that are open micers who are saying stuff, but it's like people have to weigh in on you. And the bigger you get, more people are going to weigh in on you. And the yeah. thing is, he is a, like any comedian in the world, it is a singular narrative. Mm. It's Matt's version of this, but that's true of everything. If you put out your thoughts in a Ted talk of sorts, even if it wasn't comedy, you'd have people that would disagree with you. 100%. Most people disagree with most people. 100%. It's the thing that we get unified yeah. on that makes us a community that makes us a, a um, um, sort of a, uh, uh, a city that builds into a car, whatever it is, but we are a more, we are more alike and we're more different. It's just that we don't let those differences get in the way. And the fact that people are now using that to judge his personality. I just think, don't you realize that he is taking all of your criticism to the bank? He doesn't care. Yeah. What did you think of the joke? The domestic violence. Um, is that what you're talking about? The domestic I think violence so. So that's, I yeah. think that's if you guys don't know. So that's basically the, the premise is like, you made a joke about domestic violence, about a woman having a black eye. She go back to the kitchen, something like that. I didn't yeah. watch the whole special. I watched the first like 15 minutes of it. Um, it was just a, an opening joke. It's not, and it's not like the whole, cause when I read the articles and headlines, that's the thing about headline culture. They made it sound like the whole special yeah. was just misogynistic and bashing women, which is not the case. It was one joke. Um, which I personally thought it was an okay joke. I, th I don't think it was like groundbreaking or anything. The hostess who like seats you at the restaurant had a black eye. <laughs> a full black eye. And it wasn't like, what happened? Yeah, it was pretty obvious what happened. And my boy who I was with was like, yeah, I feel bad for her, man. I feel like they should you know, put her in the kitchen or something where nobody, <laughs> where nobody has to see her face, you know? And I was like, yeah, but I feel like if she could cook, she wouldn't have that black eye. <laughs> <laughs> I figure if we start the show with domestic violence, the rest of the show should be should be pretty smooth sailing after that. It's hard to, oh, let me tell you, to, in his defense, I think it's hard to open any special. Oh, yeah, for when sure. When you think about the first, because I've gone back since that and watched yeah. other people's first jokes, that's a hard thing because you're mm -hmm. setting the tone yeah. for an hour. Yeah. For the most part, half hour, whatever it is. <clears throat> And even when people do late night sets, like a first joke and, and, you know, maybe Matt was doing it. I, I mean, I, I have no idea, but you think at least he had people's attention sure. because you think yeah. like, you know, people want to write him off the way he looks. They think he hasn't been yeah. working hard enough. I think that was a, it's not, it's not a random. I mean, that was a choice, yeah, that's, right? Yeah. That was a very strong choice to maybe because his brand is very like Justin Bieber, Hollywood, kind of like mainstream, you yeah. know, with a heavy female Gen Z audience. And I just, I mean, from my, again, I'm not, I have not talked to him about it, but I just feel like he wants also respect from the male comedy crowd. People like Chappelle he's hanging out with, you know, or sure. he wants that because they're more on the edgy side. And I think with that, you kind of set the tone and make a step towards a more well-rounded comedian in terms of not, not just that <laughs> social media Domestic um, violence makes I mean, not, not specifically that. I'm just saying like being, being a bit more edgy, you know, because otherwise he would have <laughs> no, just been a basic you. white dude who's a basic straight white dude. To share clips, they need yeah. to, they, people need to, like the clips, that I'm, you know, when I would do a podcast or um, a joke, the ones that were the most polarizing were the ones that got shared. 
unless it like it was an every impression, single time, but every here's the thing, single time, like so you you what you realize are it sucks because it has shifted our ability to tell comedy. Because if you were just to go out there and be like, there's no such thing as social media, just tell the jokes that you think are funny. Mm-hmm. Don't worry. You're not going to have to promote this. It's going to be on HBO. Yeah. That is a very different thing than like you need a joke up top so that people share it and go, I hate this guy. And you go, I never even heard of this guy. Who is he? Yeah. Let me read the article. All right. Now I'll check out the special. Exactly. Like you need to be a part of Dude. the problem essentially, which for you isn't but all these people by the way are making they're making a living off of Klein uh, and, and his and, career and that is the problem with that and even the media landscape because there's an incentive for negativity right well, without it, that they don't they don't have a job 100 and there's a i mean you see it there's even stats online that negativity spreads so much faster it does I'm, absolutely my, i make youtube videos for a living where i analyze titles and thumbnails a negative title will always get so many more clips you know, if you have like why the economy is going to shit in 2024 is going is going to do way better than the best things you can do to prevent whatever. It's always the negative stuff that pulls more or why Matt Rife needs to be stopped gets more views than, you know, some, something on the, on the positive. You know, what's funny is blame. I think that yeah. with positivity, it feels manufactured. Whereas we all feel yeah. a sense of, cause like there's like, like people come up in my feed sometimes on Instagram. It's the only one that I'm on. I have a TikTok, but I don't run it because I was on it for like a little bit and I'm like, I hate this. Yeah. And so, so at some point I'm connecting with people that are then filtering this into my Explorer page, but I'll look at somebody and be like, this is the thing. And I'm like, it just feels inauthentic. Whereas like the sadness, the negativity that truly does feel yeah. like the, honest. And I think that that's what people connect to because for the most part, you know, it's like hopefully like 10% of your life is amazing. 10% is probably going to be shitty and you want to live in that 80%, right? You never want to be too high. You never want to be too low. And so, but I think that people, even with all the things and the pressure and sort of the, the, the FOMO that we have from looking at other people and, and, and hearing about people's success and like the comparative nature sure, and sort sure. of that you think that, that it, it invites like, like Glinda the good witch to your negativity, like come out, come out wherever you are. So it feeds into that even like, even like breadcrumbs for Hansel and Gretel. And so if you do that, at least you'll feel a sense of community. And then you check the comments, right? You yeah. see that that's what people do. And they go, Oh, at least I'm not alone in hating this piece of shit. And you mm. go, Jesus Christ, this is how you'd spend your time and your energy. But the truth is we're as bored as we ever have been. Sure. We'll find a way to, you know, they always, this is a terrible misogynist thing, but it's like, you, you've ever seen the best looking girl in the world. I'll tell you, I'll show you a picture of a guy who's tired of fucking her. It's the same thing with yeah. social media. Give humans the opportunity to do anything in the world. I'll show you humans who hate their lives who are bored to shit of it. Yeah. And yeah. so it's like you, you, we, so, so with the depth of these options, it becomes like an even more sort of bottomless pit and it's just spreading. Mm. And that feels authentic because of all the real shit that goes on, the war, the pro- poverty, the crime, the inequality, the racism, sure, the yeah. violence. It's like that stuff. I think that there's a sense of connectivity to it of like, Oh, that is the bad stuff that's going on. And I think that people do look at escapism, but in the back of their mind, I think that they know that it's hollow. And then it, mm. it's completely manufactured. Yeah. Well, especially also with, especially with those clips that creates the narrative. Yeah. Most people who are upset about this haven't even watched the special. And that's what we're talking about. Or seen him live. Or seen him live. He's or anything so like funny. That. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he used to, he used yeah. to host all the time. Um, when I was at laugh, when I would, you know, for a lot of the shows that I did at laugh factory and I'd have friends who come see the show and be like, dude, that guy is way too funny for how good looking he is. Like, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Like they couldn't do, you know, they couldn't compliment without giving a backhand to him. Yeah. yeah, but yeah like, for sure, for sure. But people were like, I know, especially guy, dudes can, that's what I talk about a lot. It's yeah. like guys cannot compliment each other nah. without like, you know, it's like, you know, that dude was so funny. Probably had a small dick. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> funny, you know, or, for and, a basic white guy from Tennessee. Yeah. You know? Do you guys have any uh, domestic violence jokes? I do. Uh, I we don't are. think I do. <laughs> it's not about domestic violence though. It's about who we give a pass to. Because people try to cancel people all the time, right? And then you realize, um, yeah, but I like that guy's music. Or I, mm. I like right. that. So, sure, we, yeah. so it's really about that. It's not about Michael um, Jackson. Yeah. Michael Jackson, whatever it is, R. R. Kelly. Somebody, yeah, R. Kelly yeah. I mean, it's like, and, and, and not just those two, but everybody else, Frank Sinatra. You know what I mean? There, there's like, there's, here's the thing. 
and, and I mean this, um, this isn't to poke holes in anything, but when you look at everybody, we're trying to be better every day as people, right? But everybody before us was doing the best that they could to, and some of them were pieces of shit. A lot of people were. And the truth is that now we're just filming everything. So people, that's the other thing is that's why it feels dishonest too. It's not that filming things has made us better people. Mm. We just hide the things that we're not proud of. Yeah. And so you think about if they're famous and they have a power dynamic and they can take advantage of people. It's like, I'm never shocked when someone's like, like even with Bill Cosby, which I have, that's like my opening joke is about Bill Cosby. And I'm just like, but you can't be shocked. Yeah. You know, it's like, how many people do you, I mean, you always think about like that guy, Jimmy Savile or Seville. Do you know that guy who was, Uh he was, um, he was a TV personality in England. Very famous, got knighted by the queen did all these charities. He was one of the most deplorable people that has, that has ever been caught on film. He, I mean, look it up. Okay. Watch yeah. that. Well, it's also like once you're on that level and you see the pressure and what we talked about before, controversial stuff will always spread way faster. So we're incentivized. And when you're on that level and you have so much pressure, like Matt Rife is under right now, I can only imagine, right? Like, it's insane. You are going to make mistakes or not even mistakes. It's, it's, it's hard. And I want to give them a little bit of, um, you know, have a little bit of empathy for that too, because it's hard to be in that position. Like, you know, I, I made a video about like, whenever I make a video, something related to like German being, you know, Jewish, German, stuff like that, yeah, right? Yeah. That slightly controversial, that's the most viral stuff I've ever done, right? Same with Matt Reif. And even, you know, this, uh, you know, sorry about like this guy, Logan Paul, who did this video with the suicide forest. Yeah, of course. Horrible thing that he did. However, putting yourself in the position where you are rewarded for something spectacular, for something like right. that. It, it, it is understandable why at a young age you could make a, a bad judgment. Like but also that, he right? apologized. He did for sure. Maybe, I'm yeah. like, I'm about the, the apology. Oh yeah. The, we didn't even talk about that. Yeah. What do you think about, because if you guys don't know the story, basically he apologized because a lot of people came after him and then he, um, Matt Rife you're talking about Matt, Matt Rife. Yeah, yeah. Matt Rife made an apology and uh, sent people to his official apology, which was essentially a link to a special needs helmet you could purchase online, a real site. Yeah. So, um, he yeah, trolled, what if, he, the he, the he, it, was, it was fully true. Yeah. Cause people yeah. don't give it. Here's the, here's the thing that I appreciate about Matt. Um, amongst other things. I mean, he, he's great. People don't even, what do they want from you? You've already apologized specifically. We'll go back to Logan Paul. You look at Kevin Hart who was using slurs online. Sure. Yeah. He apologized so many times, but the mob doesn't know what they want. They go, we want justice. They go, what does that mean? Yeah. What does it he mean? He didn't do yeah. anything illegal. Sure, he sure. said something that was controversial and it was insensitive. Absolutely. Was it in bad taste? Disrespectful. No one is arguing that it wasn't. He apologized more. Well, apologize. Again. Okay. Well, he'll apologize again. More. What more though? There's always this yeah. vague definition sure. to the yeah. one individual. It's like, does he owe you that apology? So with Matt, he knew that people are going to be like, I demand an apology from you. And then he goes, all right, here it is. Oh, it's a special needs helmet. Like, because they won't be satisfied. That's what's so funny. Yeah. The idea, it's the pursuit of taking down somebody. People love that. We love that. Our second favorite sure. thing is to build someone up. And our first favorite oh, thing yeah. is to tear them down. Tear them down. 100%, so, yeah. so you think like with a guy like him, who was that apology going to satisfy? Like, so why even bother? Yeah, but yeah. people were like, well, he should have an apology to me. He doesn't know who you are, you motherfucker. Yeah. So it's yeah. like, and if you have an issue with him, stop supporting his comedy. It's like, that's right. You can always just not watch. That's the thing. I mean, some people say it's the responsibility because you, it's, it's not that you're watching it as because you inspire other people and you kind of normalize that you, whatever. I mean, I've had, but even, like, but even if he failed, if I may, sometimes, and by the way, there are great comedians that, 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 try things. And I'm not even saying that he succeeded or failed with that joke. It's an attempt to do something every time you get on stage and every audience perceives it differently. Right. Yeah. And so the audience, it was for that joke. Now, obviously he did it in that room and it was put out publicly to people, but that's just what jokes are. They're not going to work every single time. Yeah. And you know, you, you, you can have a comment. You can always break down comedy and be like, it was lazy or it was brave or it was whatever, whatever, but it's an attempt to put something out. It's like, you look at a painting and you go, I don't care for that painting or I love that painting. Well, it exists and it doesn't represent him today. It yeah. was then we're moving on. It's part of a conversation about communicating through humor that it will on go as long as we've been, you know, uh, in existence as a species. Yeah. 
By the way, the painting he looked at when he pointed at the painting <laughs> was um, me naked. No, I know what it is. Yeah, I yeah. see what it is. I'm looking right at those cheeks, baby. <laughs> right at those cheeks, dude. You got to give him a tour before he leaves. Oh, my God. Yeah. I don't know if you noticed my apartment is full of art and it's predominantly art of me. Yeah. Half naked. Um, no, I saw in your bathroom. Yeah. You saw the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it said, I'm home. <laughs> above the toilet. And I was like, oh, okay. This guy just on the toilet beating off to himself. I'm like, I like this. Listen, I want to give other people a chance to beat off to me if they come to my home. It thinks the least yeah. I can do. I'm Tell a good me host, you sell you know? these prints on your website. No, but I sell a calendar. Can you pull the calendar real quick? Oh, that's it's good. Under, it's underneath the, um, you see it? You should sell toilet paper with your face on it. Not for the shit part, but if you want me between your cheeks. Oh, I do. It was almost you. in harmony. He's a businessman. <laughs> He's a businessman. Yeah. This is the bromance calendar. It's like 12 months of bromance with my best friends. Uh, my, my German mom, my dad isn't, this is my dad. He's a chimney sweeper from Germany, you know, celebrating bromance. Yeah. Wait, it, it, I love it that it looks like that you're in the bromance, that your friend is the Jollibee. Uh, yes, from, from the exactly. Philippines. Our, our Jollibee is the, yeah. we went to the You're Philippines. You're not Filipino, bro. You're like that guy from 23 and Me. I am um, actually 25% Filipino. I'm famously Filipino. You're 25%? Yeah. Really? Are you? Yeah. Wait. Like Zach Morris, like a Mark <laughs> Paul Glasner. No, no, but you know Mark Paul Glasner? He's half, uh, I believe, his mom is from Thailand. I'm going to get well, that wrong. Sometimes right? with the, ha- with yes, the Asian, there's right. little, dude, I, I, and I've told this before, but there's some photos of me when I was modeling where I look, I see a model in Singapore and Thailand yeah. in South Korea and they made me look more Asian. They had made me dye my hair black and some of the photos, no joke, man. I was on set. They were like, Mario, can you, can you like, can you just like, you know, look more Asian? No joke. I, I squinted my eyes a little bit like this and I looked. You do. A quarter Asian. When I do this, when I do it back to you, you do. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's no, a, but yeah, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's, uh, by the yeah. way, but. Whatever sells, right? That's right. No, that's where, that's right. Back to that sex sells. And I know I love, I love bromance. It's a big part of my message. Like men should be more, they should compliment each other. No matter if they're gay or straight, we should be close. Talk about our feelings. You ever seen those old Abercrombie catalogs? Yeah. Bro. Yeah. I got, I found one from my childhood in the nineties. I have it in my apartment right now. I was like, man, these are great. Just guys in half naked wool running around playing an, a, a, a sport that doesn't exist in a field and a camp that they don't go to. It's awesome. Well, that was Bruce Weber, my Bruce dude. Weber. That was Bruce Weber. Brother. I used to do he, a lot of jokes about, about the, you saw the, the, the documentary. Uh, no, the but I know the sexual harassment stuff because I was in it. <laughs> we were in it. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, are yeah. you in those catalogs? Not on those, no. But like, okay, we talk about this a lot, but like uh, we have, I mean, we in modeling, we've experienced so much sexual harassment. Yeah. Essentially why I became a comedian or like why I kind of, Became, I mean, became a YouTuber first and then left fashion, basically. Yeah. You know, but I still, I still appreciate it. That's a, but you know, yeah. interesting. See, that clearly is authentic. Yeah. And that, you know, I think like that type of thing, that story is so unique mm-hmm. um, that right then and there I go, you know, they go, anybody thinks they can be a comedian, right? Yeah. But I go, if you can make jokes and fun. Ooh, I would love to, if you have a time, I would love to run something by you. I'm, I'm currently writing about, cause I was raped by a, by a photographer oh or like by God. a guy in the fashion industry I'm so when I was, sorry. I was drugged and stuff. And it's all, I've talked about this publicly, but I'm writing. I had a mushroom experience, long story short, mushroom experience where I realized that I have to write about it. Cause you can turn darkness into light by yeah. making it into art. Yeah. And I feel like it, it creates more connection. Whenever I shared the story, it empowers men to be more open about things that happen to them. So that's a big, yeah. that's a big passion of mine. Cause if men feel like we can't talk about those things, right? Because we're men, especially straight dudes, we can't talk, totally. talk about anything. So um, I'm currently writing a stand up joke and I've, I've done it in New York a few times now where I talk about my experience of being raped. There's so much comedy in that because I was raped in China by a Chinese man. A lot of humor in there, you know. It's walking that line of like making sure people are not worried about you and bringing them on your side. It's yeah. an energetic line you're walking, but it's so rewarding. It's worked a few times. It's been it's been one of the most powerful things I'll ever write and do. Do you yeah, get like some in the crowd? Absolutely. Like- Did you do it in Chinatown? No, no, I, um, I should do China. That's yeah. special. That, that <laughs> Homecoming. <laughs> See if it works there. Drop a com- <laughs> com- exactly. comedy joke while you're at it. But, but that's, <laughs> a, that's, I mean, that is, you know, I, I have weird, like when I first started, because I started doing impressions, it wasn't that I was avoiding talking about anything personal. I have no, I think that the stuff about me is sort of, you know, I grew up in Illinois. I was, uh, 
even now I'm like, I can't even think of anything interesting. Yeah. And so when I think I tell stories and sort of my take on things, but I, but I think, you know, when people connect to you on that, that is such a specific, um, connection that people will feel Mm -hmm. and continue to grow from that. And that is really, uh, uh, having a, a, such a specific point of view that you own. Yeah. That is, that is you that whereas like, I, because I often wonder now, obviously I don't wish trauma on anyone, myself included, but I think about originally when people were going, well, you should talk about the traumatic things that happen in your life. Cause people will be able to connect you that way. And I was just like, I, uh, I was on, yeah, I guess I never made varsity basketball. Like, these are the <laughs> things in my life that were like yeah. haunting me. And it was just like, I, so I always commend and I'm fascinated when I hear stories like that, that are, Mm. that people are able to do that. Because I think that that I, I I have um, great admiration. And I think that uh, whenever I hear something like that and I, there's such a deep connection that I think comedy just opens the door and the mind in a way that, that drama just isn't able to do so much. Exactly. hundred percent. And that's, it's also, there's something beautiful about it because it, it, it'll, it'll make it make sense. I feel like it's empowering for me too. Whenever I told the story, I felt like so much, empowerment because telling that story sharing that point of view creates connection which absolutely makes that all make sense i wouldn't change a thing right so that's something beautiful and we have the response we can all be victims or we can choose to and unfortunately unfortunately it's mo- probably relatable to a lot of people dude it is yeah. and if not if you, even if you haven't been raped the the thing about not being able to speak up or being disrespected i think it's a thing we can all relate to as humans so yeah 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 and yeah. mine my stuff is here's Tom Hanks getting kicked in the nuts. You know, exactly. so we have different yeah. styles of comedy. Listen, it's not all I talk about. I talk about, you know, it's not, <laughs> I'm the okay. rape comedian. I'm like, <laughs> I'm the sexual assault comedian. Yeah. Also, you can't open with that shit. I can't do that. Well, I was literally <laughs> imagining you get on stage and be like, who's been raped? You like, well, <laughs> That's how you get started. Dude, that is, open with oh, now that I have your attention. <laughs> but you know, I mean, but no, first I got to talk about looking like a basic white boy, no offense. And then I got to like, you know, to talk about Germany, win the trust, and then kind of talk, totally. go, go into yeah, yeah. Where I've, are my Jews at? Get them. Ju- Get them. <laughs> I do talk about that a lot. And you know, what's funny, the Jewish stuff. Cause I know you're Jewish, yeah. right? So is my fiance. Um, love Jewish people just for the record. Big fan. But that stuff. I make fun of my girlfriend for not being practicing Jew. And, you know, it's like, I have a joke where I'm like, you know, I learned Hebrew. I was like, hey, shalom aleichem. And she was like, oh my God, I didn't know you speak Spanish. You know, things like that. So. <laughs> our people, bro. <laughs> our people, right? But that joke goes over so fucking well with Jewish people. Yeah. It's so funny. Like Jewish people are, you would think that they would get offended by that, right? They have an unknown. No. I did a charity Ooh, in Austin. Of it. Yeah. it was for the, for, um, for the summer camp. There's a lot of Jewish summer camps. And I was like, uh, surprising this camps don't have a good That's what I said. I go, why do we, why can't we just let camps go? Oh yeah. And I said, I'm like, no, we're taking it back. Like that's our version of the N word. And they laughed so hard at it. And it's just like that we want to heal. I mean, think about all the humorists. Sure. And you think about like the writers and, and and comedians and things that came right after. And, and you know, there isn't a lot of record of them before the war, but certainly after. Yeah. And you think we got to, I mean, fuck this shit is, we got to yeah. laugh about something. Yeah, man. Yeah. And, and, and I did it at a Jewish wedding, even like my friends got married, loved it. But then there was one dude that told this story to Jeff last time. I actually bought an engagement ring in Germany mm. after. So I had a show in Detroit and I flew back from Germany to Detroit. And a day prior in Berlin, I'd bought an engagement ring from Germany for my Jewish fiance. And I was going to propose and I told the story on stage and I just riffed on it. And I was like, yeah, my, my fiance, she, my girlfriend, she wanted an engagement ring from Germany, a vintage German engagement ring. So I was like, you know, it's, um, no, don't worry. It's not, it's, it's from the 1960s. I got this. It's 1960s, not 1940s. You can all relax. Had some other Jewish jokes. Very, like that was basically the joke. And the guy, there was one dude got so fucking offended about that joke. He talked to the club after in Detroit and said that if they put me up again the next night, the club is promoting anti-Semitism by having me on the show, wow. stuff like that. And it was just, that was the only time I've ever gotten any sort of, I don't know, because I think the jokes are funny and I think that's essentially what it comes down to because yeah. it's not such an obvious thing, Jewish, Germany, blah, blah, blah. But um, that, that was the one time and I was like, holy shit. Peter I, ruined your proposal because he proposed on stage that night. Was that the night? Not the night. No, oh, the uh, night. that's the night I just bought the ring. 
I wouldn't talk about getting a ring on stage if I proposed that night. He would be, by the way, that'd be insane if he was at your wedding. He's like, if anyone (laughs) does not, you know, agree with this, you need to speak now. And he's like, you remember me, motherfucker? Oh, no. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, listen, people are entitled to their opinion. Of course. You know, but, but also I think that there's a little bit like to assume bad faith, like to go to a comedy club and just realize like sometimes you know, you're not going to agree with everything, but it's not my intention to make you feel bad. No. And, and it's like, well, I'm trying to find the humor in it. I don't always get it right, but it, but I'm, my thing is to not, um, is to not hurt or offend. And I think that that, sure. I think that the, unfortunately, because people look at things in a vacuum on Instagram while they're flipping through war torn yeah. Israel, you know, with Israelis and sure, Palestinians sure. and, and, uh, and the genocide that happening, uh, other, it's like, Oh, okay. And then you see a stand-up joke. And so your brain is, mm. isn't going like, let's take a break from genocide and see if we can sure, hear this sure. Jewish joke. It's yeah. like, it's yeah. the same thing. Yeah. And it was in real life. It was not even online. It was in real life. It was in the audience. And then after he walked, I saw him and it was so awkward because I, I noticed that I left the club and then he, I was having dinner and then he walked by and I actually went outside and I talked to him for like 30 minutes and he was like, and then we saw a little more eye to eye because he was so emotionally, and I get it, I have empathy for that. He was triggered by whatever else is going on. But um, yeah. this is also before the war and anything. I mean, not that it's even related necessarily, but yeah. A woman came up to me after a show and I had told that joke that I told you about who we forgive. It's, it's okay. You know, not, not that spousal abuse is okay, but, any, but things, we make things okay if we, because we're so obsessed with celebrity culture in this country yeah. that we will allow for things to happen. This woman came up to me after a uh, show in Philadelphia and she was like, I want you, she was shaking and she's like, I want you to, to not tell that joke anymore because I w- used to get the shit kicked out of me. And I, we talked about it for a long time and I was like, I can't, it's not about that. It's about this, you know, and the joke, I think it's pretty well received. And a friend of mine, three months prior at the laugh factory, I told the same joke and she had been in a coma and she, her boyfriend beat her so badly. She was in a coma for about two months. And afterwards she said, I appreciated that you told the joke. I didn't know that she had been in, in a, uh, was getting, uh, had been abused or assaulted or whatnot, yeah. but she goes, I finally was able to laugh about it. Mm. Now it doesn't mean that I told a great joke or great. it's like, it just, it connected with her in a way. Yeah. And so, and then um, a, a couple months later, this woman in Philadelphia, it didn't connect with her that way. Sure. And so people are both entitled to their experiences. And that's I, fair. you know, that's fair, yeah. and I, and I tried to, I, I did listen to that woman out in Philadelphia and I, we talked about it for like a, a long time and, I said, I'm, I apologize, but I respect you. I'm not going to stop telling the joke. And I, yeah. but I was trying to be as communi- communicative as possible, Great. acknowledging, yeah. that, listen, your experience is yours and, and hers was hers. You know? Yeah. And she came to you Great. after the show. She I walked out, she was in the front row and she'd walked out in the middle of the show. And I thought maybe she got a phone call or had to use the bathroom. And I had sort of realized, oh, she's not coming back. And I, and she goes, I walked out in that moment when you s- said the thing that you did. And, um, and she goes, and I want to let you know why. And I was very open to hearing her, you know, and not dismissive. And we talked about it. And I think that she was very angry when she left, um, which I, I'm sorry. I've got, and I try to tell her I'm not, I wasn't, I apologize. I'm so sorry that happened to you. And it, it isn't my intention to, you know, tr- trigger you or bring that up or, or, or deflate what happened or conflate it even more by having people laugh around you about something. But it's more about this even mm-hmm. if you relate to it like that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And obviously not judging her experience at all. I think you guys should that's welcome good. hecklers more often because that's my favorite content to see of standups online. Yeah. He has a lot of standups in here. And sometimes it's hard to break through the shell. It's like kind of a 24 hour bit they're doing. And I love it when they kind of, it breaks the stand up for a second and then sure, it's you fair get, game and they just fucking crush I mean, no, the them. heckler brings you in the room, Oz, because you're present then. You know, okay. it, yeah. automatically, because you're not in, you're not rehearsing material or right. like reciting it. You're like in the room right then, and that's what connects. That's why crowd work makes you feel present with the audience, because you're obviously in the room if you acknowledge things. Yeah, but it derails yeah. sets because sometimes when it's oh, Pandora yeah. box, Pandora's yeah, okay. box. If you allow and invite a heckler in and have that happen, I mean, there's so many examples. I mean, people don't post the examples when they lose. Cause it's, it's humiliating. Yeah. And some, I mean, they, and I've seen it go off the rails so many times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause right. The, the, yeah, the, the yeah. photos we post are the most, are the best versions of ourselves. Social nobody's, media in general for yeah, sure. That's yeah. What I'm saying. So, real, yeah. so nobody's posting like 
Yeah. Where they look like a pug. Yeah. Or, you know, from the bottom of their That'd camera. That'd be fun, actually. I think I want to do that once. So, you know, when I'm like really famous, I'm going to post a bit. I'm like, you know, this is the fucking reality. Because on Instagram, a lot of girls now post photos with like cellulite and stuff, you know. And I've, po- I've posted a photo, photo where I've only had like five apps, you know. So I think that's good for people take to- Take one ab out. Take one ab out, just to know that, <laughs> let people know that it's okay to only have five apps. It's one of those pictures <laughs> yeah. where they go, which one of these is different? <laughs> exactly. And then yeah. you're trying to like highlights magazine where you're like, is there a bird? Yeah, it's like the more I- raw. I think people are also going to gravitate more towards the, the raw real. I think so. Know? I think that that's yeah. where, I yeah. feel like that's where we're headed with people on TikTok sort of being like, hey, right? without the edits. Not the edited version Version on that note, guys, you can purchase the romance calendar right now, highly edited. Perfect. Yeah, I was going to say, or the non-edited photos. version is $20 more because <laughs> we don't sell as many of those oh man jonathan thanks so much for coming on appreciate Thank you, you man so what yeah. it's jonathan kite at yes. instagram yeah. and and where are you going on tour right i'm on tour um i will have everything up i'm i'm in arizona this weekend but i um yeah we i'll be on tour all six seven months and then i'm gonna hopefully shoot my special nice the, uh, late spring early summer next year fuck yeah, yeah. jonathan kite wow. comedy.com Amazing. Yeah. What and then uh, TikTok, the Jonathan Kite, because I couldn't get Jonathan Kite. I have the Mari Adrian, because yeah. my first one was deleted for showing a little bit of ball sack. You know, that's What's the, the struggle to see out. Yeah. Oof. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Chinese. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. you Chinese prudes. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's because I talk about China too badly on here, you know? And then Instagram <laughs> is Jonathan Kite. Been ra- raped by China twice. Um, cool. <laughs> Guys, oh thanks for God. watching. Stay Uncensored. New episode every single Wednesday. We love you. Peace out. Bye. Peace. Cheers, man. Thank Cheers, you so dude. Much. Thank you, brother.